In today's video, we're gonna make some election documents accessible. Welcome to the Accessibility Guy channel. My name is Sean Jordison and let's jump right in. All right, so I just threw in election documents into Google and we're gonna try to find a PDF we can work on. Let's check out what to bring to your polling place. And there's a document, you can review the complete list. Uh, so this document gives you the information needed to come to a polling place. Let's go ahead and download the file and let's review the accessibility of this document. Uh, step one of the accessibility guide method for tagging PDFs is to uh, check the tags panel. So let's see if there's any tags in this document. And there does appear to be some tags. We've got an H1 and some text and some lists that are not properly formatted, but the lists actually don't even really make sense. These are gonna be pretty fun to fix. All right, and then we have this content at the very end. So uh, the document's not quite accessible. There are some key factors that are missing. So let's just jump right in. The first thing I'm going to do is right click and create a new tag for document. And then I'm going to move all of my tags inside of that document tag. And now we have, let's see, our heading one. I suppose that can be heading level one. And then we have all this information, title two, administration. I don't know that this is necessarily a heading level two. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is actually combine some of the text of this document. So I'm going to take those container elements and move them under the paragraph tag of the copyright information because it seems like they just randomly applied headings. Whereas this one, standards for proof of residency or identity, that seems like it's important. So I'm gonna make that a heading level two. And then it looks like the basics of this document is just like one giant list. So we're gonna have some fun here. Let's right click and create new tag and select the L tag. Um, this is gonna be the basis for our list item. So this very first list item, I've got one, two, three, four list items. So I've got A through D. Let's see if we can find them. Okay, they are already separated. This is a good step. I'm going to select all four of those elements and just move them into the, the L tag. And then I'm going to change all of these P tags. I'm gonna right click them, select properties, and we're gonna change them all to a capital LI for a list item. Then select close. Now we need to expand this a little further. Now we need to split these up. So in theory, we could do a label and an L body tag but we need to create them. So I'm going to right click inside of this content area, select new tag, and we're gonna do LBL followed by an L body. And we're gonna to have to do this for every one of these. So I'm first gonna select the LBL tag. I'm then going to highlight the A in the document and then go up to the accessibility tags options and then select create tag from selection. We're then gonna select body and we're gonna select all of that text, go up to the options menu and select create tag from selection. And what that did is it split up the list into an, a label and an L body. Now we need to do it for the rest of these tags, but let's try changing this up a little bit. I'm gonna go to all tools. We're gonna go to prepare for accessibility and let's do fixed reading order. I'm going to try to separate the B, the C and the D from the text. There we go. All right, again, our first list item is good. And then our second one is not quite there but every list item needs to have an L body. And so I'm just strategically right clicking and doing new tag. And then I'm going to change all of these B, C, D, the ones that I pulled out, right click them, and we're gonna change them to LBL. And then we can move them to the right location. So this label goes with this list item. This content goes with the L body. This label goes with this list item. This content goes with this L body. And so I'm just ensuring that the structure of my content is set up appropriately. Now let's deselect the list and we have our list items in here, one, two, three, four. So that's a great first step. Now we have a nested list and this actually, I think is supposed to be a sub item. So we need to adapt the structure here. We're gonna make it a parent L tag. Let's right click in here, do new tag. We need an L body and we need an LBL. And I'm gonna select the label, select the text on the page, go to the options menu, create tag from selection which separates that container element so I can now have my label and my body inside of the list tag. Uh, whoops, I forgot to create a list item tag. So this is, um, these are all important structural elements to consider. Every list needs a list item. 
Every list item needs a label and an L body. Now I'm going to take this parent L tag and I'm going to paste it inside of the parent L body in which it's referenced. So in this example, this list item for D has a nested list that contains this list element for number one. And then we need to include all of this A through J in another list. So, uh, and that's gonna live inside of the L body of this tag. So let's right click inside of that L body. We're gonna do new tag and create a parent list item. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 list items. We're gonna right click, select new tag, and we're gonna create 10 blank ones. There's two, three, right click new tag four, right click new tag five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now we're gonna move all of these list item tags inside of the parent L tag. And now this list was all in a P tag. This is what told me the document was really inaccessible. So now I need to come in and tag all of this content. So every one of these list items needs an LBL. We actually need 10 of them. So we got a lot of tags to create. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then every one of the LI tags also needs an L body tag. We're gonna do one. Right click new tag two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now before I misclick, I'm gonna save my file. All right, now we have uh, all of these things in here. We can start to build the structure of our list if we want. Um, so I'm taking a label and an L body, and I'm simply clicking and dragging them into their parent LI tags. So taking a label, L body, and dragging it in. And again, this is just to build the structure. We haven't even started tagging the list yet. Now there's probably faster ways to do this. If I would have started the document with auto tagging, there's a good chance that this would have been um, tagged appropriately, but I think it's good for remediators to know how to fix this stuff when it comes up in the wild because it will come up. All right, we've got our base structure here, a list item that has 10, excuse me, we have a list that has 10 list items. So now we're gonna select the top label and we're gonna select this A. We're gonna go to options, create tag from selection. I'm gonna select the L body and we're gonna take the text and create tag from selection. And we're just gonna repeat this. Lots of clicking, create tag from selection, L body, new passport, label. The order doesn't really matter. You can jump around if you want, but I find it easier to stay on one point at a time. And I gotta tell you, my, uh, my clicking hand is already getting tired. This is like pretty, um, pretty tedious to do it this way. But I think, like I said, it's an important step to know how to do. Because sometimes you really just need to get in here and tag some content. So this is a great practice document for doing list items manually because the whole thing is just a big giant list. So let's create the tag from selection. All right, I'm gonna save the file. And then just for sake of demonstration, let's run the auto tagger. So I could keep painstakingly uh, making these list items or let's run it through the automatic tagger. Now, sometimes I accidentally misclick this and if you missed it, I saved the file first because I wanted to, if something goes haywire, I wanna close this file and reopen it. But let's go to the top. We have our P tags in here, random list item, but look at this. I have a giant list item that appears to be properly formatted. So we've got list item, list item, list item. And then inside of here, we've got an L body with another list tag. And then this list item, wow, the automated thing is amazing. So it did it for me. It put in our label, it put in the L body, and it even tagged the next set of list items. So we had a number two up here, and then we have inside of this L body, a whole nother list. We've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T. And then we have authority here. We're gonna update this to a heading level two. And then we've got an H1 and a list item that has our history in it. And it appears to have tagged it correctly. I mean, I'm so impressed with the auto tagger sometimes. Um, that did an amazing job. Let's go back up to the top and let's make sure we have a heading one in here. I'm gonna put it back on the Barclays official California code. This is not a list item, this content. So I'm going to take it out of a list item. It seems like they're just trying to call special attention here. 
but it doesn't really make sense. Let's make it a um, P tag. All right. And then uh, we could make this a heading level two as it's the standards. Yeah, list item, heading level two. We have these section tags, but honestly, it's okay to keep them in. And then let's change this H1 to an H2 and let's save the file. I cannot believe that auto tagger. I mean, it did so good. Let's go up to the menu button and then select document properties, select description. And this is where we want to ensure we have a title, author, and a subject. And we'll select OK. And then let's run the accessibility checker. Check for accessibility. Start checking. It's currently passing our PDF, our Adobe Acrobat. Let's launch the PAC 2024 tool. And let's test our document in here. All right, so it's failing on, uh, let's do WCAG. We've got adaptable and compatible. Under adaptable, what do we got? We need to embed our fonts. And what is this under compatible? Span structure element on page one. All right, let's fix this one first. We're gonna go to the tags panel and it appears there's some span in here. I don't know why this flags me, but we're gonna control X them, delete the span tag. So sometimes the spans give us trouble. And I haven't fully understood why sometimes it causes problems and other times it does not, but that's okay. We're just gonna remove them all. So there we go. I moved the span tags out and now they're just in plain P tags. Let's save the file. Now we need to uh, embed the fonts. So to embed the fonts, I'm going to select uh, all tools and we wanna open up our pre-flight menu. And then we're going to select the wrench icon and there's an option here called embed missing fonts or you could search for fonts and then select fix and then select save and then close that window. Now let's launch the pack tool again and we're gonna test our file once more and it's now passing WCAG and we're only missing the PDF UA identifier to make it that, but also our file name. So I want to adjust the file name. Um, I'm going to say official California code of regulations. And that concludes today's video of making some election documents accessible. If you want to deep dive into learning how to make PDFs and other documents accessible, or if you want me to make your files accessible for you, check out the link in the description of this video. And as always, I could be your champion for inclusion. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.